Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss some more uh, questions which are related to the topic solutions of trigonometric equations. So let's get started. Okay, so as I've been telling you guys, we are preparing for NAST entry test. You would not be uh, using your calculators, you would not be given any data booklets. So, yes, you would have to memorize quite a lot of stuff. And uh, if you talk about this chapter particularly, that is trigonometry, you will have to memorize proper tables where you would be knowing the value of cos on, let's say, pi by 2, the value of tan on pi by 3 and stuff like that. Okay, And you would be uh, easily able to find such uh, tables uh, online. Just search up for cos tan tables and you will find a proper table with different values of angle and uh, different values of angles and different values of the function. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so it is the 12th question. What is the domain of secant inverse x? Now, when we usually talk about domain, we basically talk about the values of x, right? But this time around, it is secant inverse of x. So before saying anything, let's just plot its graph. So... This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. Now, this time we have angles on y-axis because it is secant inverse. And we have values like these over here. Okay. So, this graph is basically starting from pi by 2 and 1 and goes on like this continuously and if I talk about the other one so it starts off at this point and it goes on like this okay now obviously these are rough graphs but yeah this is the idea now when I talk about now when I talk about the domain basically I need to refer to this point and usually we think of domain in trigonometric functions as all the angles know. Here we're talking about secant inverse. So this time the domain will have one, two and such values. So what we see is that the values of x are basically either is minus one and minus two, either less than minus one or greater than one, right? So this is the answer. X is either greater than one or x is less than minus one and we have equal to sign because we are including minus one and one in our domain okay let's talk about the 13th question domain of cot inverse x now what do we understand by cot inverse x okay so again we need to think of uh, cot um, as inverse function this time because you have to find the domain of cot inverse, right? And if I plot its graph, it is going to be, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and the graph would be something of this type. Not exactly this. Let me just plot it again just so it's um, more uh, appropriate. Okay, so it would be something of this type where this value is basically pi by 2. This is y and this is x. And we should know that here y is cot inverse x and we are interested in the domain. So there's no restriction. Our graph is going on continuously on this side and continuously on this side and we're talking about x. So we have all this interval. That means we have all the real numbers in x so a would be the answer okay let's talk about some more questions Achha, so uh, this is the 14th question range of cos 
inverse x. Okay, so when we talk about the range of cos inverse x, again, you can either plot that up or you can just memorize that here, we're talking about the range. When we talk about the range, we talk about the y. And we know that since it is inverse on the y-axis, we have angles, right? We have angles on the y-axis. So answer cannot be A. So it would either be B or it would be C. And the answer is B because the range of cause inverse of x is um, starting from 0. And it is still pi. And 0 and pi are included in the range. Okay. All right. So this is done. Let's talk about the 15 question. Okay. So as I've been telling you guys, as we have been discussing that you will have to memorize quite a lot of stuff. And by that, I mean the value of uh, trigonometric functions on different angles, right? So first thing is first, you need to think about this. For this, you basically need to think about the theta on which the value of cos is minus one by two, right? So obviously you would not be allowed to use your calculators. You will be doing that using uh, whatever you have learned on the basis of your memory. So uh, on the table, you will find that for theta, two pi by three, the value of cos theta is this. This means that this would be two pi by three. And again, we need to use our table to see what is the value of tan. So the value of tan would be minus under root three. Okay. So uh, yes, I did this using that table because we need to use the values of uh, function for this purpose, right? Okay. Let's talk about the 16th question. Okay, 16th question is sine inverse one plus cos inverse one. Now we have discussed a similar question in the first part of this video where the question was sine inverse x plus cos inverse x equals pi by 2, right? So this is a property we know that this holds in general. When these two uh, numbers are same, when these two numbers are same, their sum would always give us pi by two. So this time around, we have sine inverse one plus cos inverse one. Since one and one, they are same, so the answer would be pi by two again. Okay, let's talk about some more questions. So we have the 23rd question. Okay, so 23rd question says, if X is tan inverse one by two, and y is tan inverse 1 by 3, what would be the value of x plus y? Okay, now for this, we need to understand what is x and what is y. So x is tan inverse 1 by 2, and y is tan inverse 1 by 3. And we know using a property that their sum would be equal to tan inverse fraction. In the numerator, we will have sum of these two angles, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3. And in the denominator, I am going to have 1 minus product of this angle and this angle that would be 1 by 6. And if I simplify this, I am going to get 6, 3 plus 2. I've taken the LCM. Again, I have to take LCM 6 minus 1. 6 and 6 would be cancelled. 3 plus 2 and 6 minus 1, both are 5. They would be cancelled. And what am I getting? I'm getting tan and verse 1. So we know that the value um, of tan and verse 1 is basically pi by Four. So this would be the choice, right? Okay. So let's talk about the 24th question. So we have tan sine inverse 1 by 2. Again, we need to think of the value of theta uh, when sine theta is basically 1 by 2. So we will be using a table again. And this value is pi by 6. This value is pi by 6. And again, we have to use a table to know 
that what is the value of tan at pi by six? So the value of tan at pi by six is one by under root three. Okay. So we are done with the twenty fourth question as well, and this is the twenty fifth question. So cos tan inverse infinity. Okay. So what is the value? Um, uh, what is the theta when tan value is infinity? Basically. So. If we talk about the graph of tan, it is like this, and then this is basically pi by two. We don't need other part; we only needed this much part, so it is pi by two, right? The value of tan would be somewhere, um, you know, very very close to infinity. Like the value would be very very big because the graph goes on continuously. We don't know the exact value, but we can. Claim it to be infinity at pi by two. The angle value is pi by two. So this means that we need to find the value of cos at pi by two. So that value would be zero because this is basically pi by two, and cos pi by two is zero. So this would be the answer so this is how we do all these questions i hope that you have understood these questions so i'll see you in the next video